What's up? I'm Nathan. You can find me on Twitter at GreatNateMTG, and this is the second video in my Blue White Red Geist video series. I realized that if I was going to begin creating sideboarding videos, specifically sideboarding as it relates to certain matchups, that I needed a deck list to work with. I needed to be able to demonstrate which cards I would take out and which cards I would bring in, and I needed a list to reference. It also gives me an opportunity to just do a deck tech on a configuration of Blue White Red Geist that I think is well positioned in the current meta and that I've been playing to some success myself. Um, so let's check it out. The deck plays the full suite of Snapcaster Mage. With Deathrite gone, there's no reason not to play all four. It also allows us to get aggressive earlier when we need to. Uh, of course, this is Blue White Red Geist, so we're playing four Geist of St. Traft. We're playing two Vendillion Clicks. Uh, he's good against um, Control, he's good against Combo, and if he's not removed, he can be a decent beater in, him, in and of himself. But I thought that the deck used to run three, and you'll see a lot of lists that do, but... A lot of times Vendillion Click dies to Lightning Bolt or some other removal spell. And since Blue White Red Midrange is actively trying to kill you or pressure you, I think having an additional Restoration Angel in place of that Vendillion Click gives you another creature that you can flash in and get damage in. It's more survivable than Vendillion Click. And oddly enough, the Restoration Angel Vendillion Click or Restoration Angel Snapcaster Mage interaction is has come up more often than I thought it would, and right now I'm happy with this list. If I was facing more tokens at my local store, um, I would definitely bring in Thundermaw Halkite, and I wish I could make room for him, but right now I've been happy with this. Um, so we're running three Path to Exile. Path to Exile is a fantastic removal spell, but if you can play more burn spells over Path to Exile, it's something you want to do. Not only do they remove a creature without giving your opponent land, they serve as a win condition later on in the game when you're snapping them back to send the burn uh, to the opponent's face. For Lightning Bolt, this almost never changes. I've seen some of the control versions run three, but in the mid-range version, you're probably always going to be running for want to be running for Lightning Bolt. It's removal, it's a win condition, it's probably the best red spell there is. Um, Lightning Helix... Great card, six point life swing. Same, it, it's it's almost just the additional lightning bolts. It kills your opponent, gains you life. It's easy to snap back with Snapcaster Mage. And I'm running to Electrolyze. Electrolyze is a great card. Some would say it's one of the reasons to play this deck. There was a time when the banning of Deathrite Shaman just happened and people were advocating playing zero or one Electrolyze. Uh, over the full uh, complement of Path to Exile. But I feel like the deck does lose something when you do that. It Doing that gives you a great game against uh, the Naya aggressive matchups and, and some of the, the larger Naya variants. But you also lose some of the flexibility. Electrolyze, when it's good, it's just so good that I prefer to play at least a couple of copies, copies, so when the opportunity does present itself to get value out of Electrolyze, uh, I'm able to. It's just, it's a very good card, and, and um, the deck overall is just better by having some copies in it. Um, so that brings us to the control cards. Uh, I want to talk just a little bit about Spell Snare. Spell Snare, I think, fits very well in this deck. Because it costs one mana, and we're running three copies, and the deck wants to play the beginning stages of the game in a reactive way, Spell Snare fits well into the deck. Now, Spell Snare is kind of a metagame card. It's really good right now. It hits a lot of relevant cards. Bitter Blossom, Pyromancer's Ascension, Voice of Resurgence, Tarmogoyf, uh, just to name a few, and denying your opponent the ability to... Uh, make their turn their turn uh, to play is exactly what this deck wants to be doing so spell snare is, is really good right now I've been I've been happy to run it um, it you know it's also actually good uh, when you find yourself in the control mirror or in, or in a mirror or again a control matchup because it hits a lot of their relevant counters as well as snapcaster mage 
Um, I'm doing a two for two split with mana leak and remand. You'll see some people run three mana leaks, and you'll see some people want, run um, one remand. Um, I haven't seen a lot of people go the full suite of remands and no mana leaks. And I'm doing this right now just because I like I like having both options. There are times when you'll remand something, slow them down a turn, and then end up mana leaking it anyway. Um, and you know, I, I guess the reason to play more mana leaks is if you need more definitive answers. Um, both counters um, kind of get a little bit worse as the game goes long. Mana Lake, obviously people can just pay for it, and sometimes with Remand you can play it and they can just recast it. I think this is a good number. I've been happy with it. Um, so moving on, I'm also running three Cryptic Commands. I've run four in the past, um, and I've also run two. I definitely think two is too few. I think three is right. It's a high mana cost spell. You're also running uh, Restoration Angels. And running four cryptic commands and two or three restoration angels, restoration angels might just be a little bit higher on the curve than this deck wants to be, uh, but I think three is it's a good compromise number. Um, I, I know for sure it's better than two. I think four might be too much. I've been happy with seeing uh, three cryptic commands. So moving on, um, this is our mana uh, mana base for fetches and utilities. Pretty self-explanatory. The fetch is a wrong color. Uh, Celestial Colonnade is the best man land in the game. Tectonic Edge gives you answers to uh, problematic land cards. Uh, Mutavault, for example, or maybe Nykthos. Um, we're running two Hollow Fountains, two Steam Vents, one Sacred Foundry, and two Sulphur Falls. I, I do want to talk about the Sulphur Falls slot just for a moment. Uh, you'll see some lists that run a... In, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Engajo, Engajo Castle. Uh, the castle land allows you to pay a white and tap it, and it makes it prevents two damage to a legendary creature. Uh, I, I, I've played with it both ways. It is relevant, but I think I've found that I just want a more stable mana base. I'd rather lose a game... Uh, because of some other interaction rather than because I wasn't hitting my colors. So for that reason right now, I prefer to play the, t the two sulf Sulfur Falls over the one Sulfur Falls in one castle. Um, we're running these three basics, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Gives us uh, a game against cards that bring in, or against decks bringing in things like Blood Moon, um, and also just gives us pain-free lands to fetch with our fetches. Um, that's all for the basic deck tech. I think... I'm going to go ahead and work on the first sideboarding video. I think uh, we'll pick Affinity. One, because it's pretty prevalent um, in the uh, meta right now. And uh, it's also the letter A. But no, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's an easier deck. It's an easier sideboarding matchup to cover. And um, one that I think people would find valuable. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'm looking forward to making my next video. Again, if there's anything that you guys would like to see me cover or do, please let me know. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter at GreatNateMTG. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.